I'm joined by Radislav Albrecht, founder and CEO of Bitbond. Bitbond became famous as the first issuer of a tokenized bond that got approved by the BaFin, which is Germany's financial supervisory authority. Today, we want to talk about the digital euro and how we might be able to use it in the near future. Radko, why does it need the digital euro? Well, Stefan, thank you so much for having me. Um, why does it need a digital euro? Digital euro is a is a great topic in my view. Um, a lot of banks uh, and, in general, financial market participants are talking a lot about the digital euro, um, and there's a good reason they do that because there's some real life uh, use cases, and uh, some of these are in the context of uh, digital or tokenized securities where if you bring payments on chain with a digital euro, um, you can introduce a lot of efficiencies that we're going to talk about later. Um, then in the context of e-commerce, um, it's a great uh, topic and a great use case. And this is also something where banks typically that provide payment services are involved. Um, and then on the other hand, you have completely new areas of applications that are related to, for example, machine to machine payments, which is something that is very relevant in the IoT space. So in general, there's plenty of um, applications of a digital euro, and there is a lot of justification for talking about it and uh, evaluating what it is, how it can be set up and who can use it. A lot of companies want to use blockchain but they don't want to use cryptocurrencies. Stable coins have been around for quite a time now. We have Libra, a project coming close to market readiness, and we have established stable coins such as Tether. So what is the difference between the digital euro that you envision and for example, Tether and Libra? Um, in general, there are several types of uh, stable coins or versions of a digital euro. Um, one that has recently been discussed quite a lot is something that is abbreviated with CBDC, uh, in short for Central Bank Digital Currency. Um, this is the um, thought process and the concept of a central bank issuing a programmable digital euro. Um, then alternatively to that, you have concepts like Libra, um, which is a foundation that is mainly driven by Facebook, but also many other companies that are planning to issue a stable coin that at the end of the day is a token that tries to achieve a maximum of value stability, but that is not tied to one particular fiat currency such as the Euro or the dollar. So this is a token that has a stable value if they issued the way it's planned. However, it does not exactly represent uh, one particular currency. Um, and then as an alternative to that, you could also look at uh, what the private banks are doing and the private banking sector, and they can issue uh, digital euro. They've actually been doing it for many years um, under the e-money regime. Uh, however, the technologies that typically have been used for e-money um, are today a little bit outdated. In many cases, they are, you can call them gated or permissioned technologies, uh, which means that the use of those e-money euros is relatively limited. However, when you bring that to a public and permissionless blockchain, then you can combine um, some of the advantages of blockchain-based tokens with some of the advantages of, of e-money. Um, because e-money is a, is a very well understood concept and there's a lot of regulation around it, which is very helpful for market participants. So this is one way we look at it. And then of course, one, one final point that you have is you have uh, things like Tether, like the USD coin um, that is issued, for example, by Coinbase. Um, these are also fiat based tokens. Uh, that uh, are backed by a fiat balance. However, they are not issued by banks or by established financial institutions. Um, and they, to a certain degree, compete with those e-money-based uh, stable coins that are issued by banks. So essentially what you are saying is that the solution that you are working on brings the same euro to companies um, that they are using already through the same banks that are, they are working with today. So how do you, Bitbond, help realize this digital euro? 
So Bitbon is acting as a technology provider and a technology partner to banks and other regulated financial institutions such as asset managers or custodian banks. And we as Bitbond are not issuing digital euros ourselves. Um, we don't have a banking license. Uh, we don't have an e-money license. We also don't pursue to obtain any of these licenses because we see ourselves as technology experts while the banks are typically um, the companies that have the client relationships that have a certain level of scale and that have the necessary regulatory permits such as an e-money and a full banking license and but we have a lot of experience with tokenization and when working together with banks and so we provide banks and other financial intermediaries with the technology so that they can issue digital euros and also other tokens and normally this is a win-win situation because they uh, can take advantage of a fintech company that is very very agile and that is used to working with the latest uh, technologies um, while they can maintain their business and enhance that with the technology that we provide them with Let's talk about the use cases, as this is a topic that is most interesting for most of our viewers. I can see that you as Bitbond um, benefit from the digital euro quite a lot, as you have a digital um, and tokenized bond, and the digital euro can be used for interest payments or for the maturity payment. But what are some other use cases that maybe are useful to you, and what other use cases will we see for the digital euro in the future? Mm -hmm. So. If, if you look at uh, uh, the Bitbond token, which was the first tokenized security um, in Germany and probably in Europe last year, uh, we have decided to um, use a cryptocurrency for the interest payments and for the principal payment at maturity. Um, and the reason for that is that at the time when we issued it, there was no bank issuing a stable coin, a digital euro. However, today in some of the projects where we are involved in, also with other issuers that are issuing uh, tokenized securities, um, there's a high need for a digital euro because one of the promises that blockchain and tokenization uh, delivers is something that's called an instant delivery versus payment mechanism. So when I buy a security from you, I want to have the security delivered instantly, um, regardless of borders and uh, of central securities depositories. So I want to be able to have a um, kind of user experience that is very similar to email, for example, where I know that when I send a message, it arrives immediately. Now, when I have an asset tokenized, such as a bond or a fund share uh, or a property, then of course the token that represents the ownership can be transferred immediately. However, when the payment happens in a traditional way through a bank transfer, for example, then these two transactions, the delivery and the payment are not linked with each other, which means that if you take one business day to complete and to settle the bank transfer, you don't really have this instantaneous experience. And at the same time, you still have the counterparty risk. Because one of the motivations behind an instant delivery versus payment mechanism is that both parties to the transaction uh, mitigate their counterparty risk that they have during the time before the transaction is settled. Now, when we bring a euro onto the same chain, onto the same protocol where you have the proof of ownership in an asset, then you can wrap the delivery and the payment in one transaction, which technically is called an atomic swap, a delivery and payment transfer which happens in the same logical second and therefore first of all you save a lot of time because it's instant and you also completely reduce your counterparty risk so this is one application that we as Bitborn are looking at but this is something that also a lot of other capital market participants are highly interested in especially if you look at less liquid asset classes such as syndicated loans or uh, leveraged loans. These are instruments that are not publicly listed, so they are not a security as such. Uh, and they have settlement times that are 20 days or even longer. And the counterparties in such transactions need to um, put up uh, capital for those transactions and uh, simply need to wait until the cash arrives. And if you can tokenize the loans, 
and if you can tokenize the payment and you can create a much, much faster settlement, then all market participants benefit from that. And so this is a broader application that obviously goes beyond just what we do at Bitbond, um, but that's something that all capital markets participants are highly interested in. This got very technical really quickly. So now's the perfect time. What topics are you going to talk about in your lectures? The lecture will dive much, much deeper into these topics that we just scratched on the surface. Um, it will get a little bit technical here and there, uh, but I hope to provide a lot of context to all of these concepts so that they are well understood and so that uh, everybody um, who finishes watching the lecture will have a good idea, first of all, what is tokenization? And that's kind of the introductory part because um, a digital euro is just a, a one of the use cases and applications of tokenization. So we will make a general introduction into that. We'll make a general introduction into different blockchain protocols that in theory can be used in order to issue a digital euro. So we'll look at what are some of the technical capabilities that are there. We will look at what are some of the legal aspects um, and regulatory aspects uh, of issuing a digital euro. And then we will look at some use cases and some case studies. So we'll look at um, case studies where a digital euro is already applied today by commercial and private banks, because uh, ultimately the lecture should show how commercial banks and how private banks can on the one hand make use of a digital euro and on the other hand how they can become issuers themselves in order to use it in their context and in their business. Thank you very much for the interview, Radko, and I look very much forward to your lecture.